What's up guys, my name is Michael and welcome to my YouTube channel. Today we are going to go over what XOR is and what the operation of XOR. So let's say that, let's say I have a group of people, right? A group of people who like dogs. And I also, this is a group of people and I'll just play dogs, right? These people are people like dogs. And let's say there's a group of people who likes cats, okay? Now I want to tell you, I want to ask you, how many people who like cats and dogs? Okay, so how would you do it? Let's say there are people who have like cats and dogs. And you want to group these people together. So well, what is a good way to do it? Well, normally you would just draw a Venn diagram. So you would have one side, you have other people who likes dogs. And one side are the people who likes cats, right? And then whatever's in the middle, in this Venn diagram, this part, is going to be the people who like dogs and cats. And this is just like from grade school, like if I have a set of people who like dogs and a set of people who like cats, the intersection inside this Venn diagram are gonna be the people who like dogs and cats. Okay, so now that we know people who like dogs and like cats, well, if, what if I asked you to find the people who like dogs or cats? So what do you do? Well, you basically do the same thing. You have these people who like dogs, but now you ask them, what are the people who like dogs or cats? Well, the people who like dogs or cats are going to be the people who like dogs. So first of all, it's going to be all the shaded area on this side, right? Because they like dogs, right? So this part of the Venn diagram is the people who like dogs, but it's also the or cats, right? So either or, so it's dogs or cats. So that's going to be also including the rest of the shaded area for cats, right? Because you like dogs or cats. So this is what dogs or cats is right so this is a set of people who like dogs a set of people like cats and dogs or cats is going to be the whole shaded area but now let's say i ask you what if i want to find the people who like dogs or cats but i want to exclude the ones who like both of them so how would you draw that it's going to be the same diagram so it's going to be like be dogs or cats but what are we going to do is we're going to exclude the ones that are in the center of and Right, so it's the same thing. It's dogs, or uh, dogs or cats, but we're gonna exclude the values that are in both of them. Of dogs, and then these values. So this this shaded region, right? This shaded region, right? This shaded region, region, and uh, this shaded region. Cats, right? And we're not gonna include the ones that are in both of them, right? So. Uh, I hope you guys I hope you guys could see what my drawing of this shaded region is so it's basically the same thing as an or except we're gonna exclude the ones that are in both of them okay so now let's actually draw a truth table and show you guys what you mean when you have an exclude so let's uh, let's say I have two people right here and this is gonna be the this is gonna be the dog side and then this is going to be the cat side, okay? And this is going to involve the exclusive or, right? Dogs and cats, okay? So let's say you have someone who likes both of them, right? Dogs and cats. Well, we're excluding that out of our set, right? Out of a set of the center. So what, what does that mean? So that means that we're not going to include it. So it's just going to be false, right? We're not including it that both true and true, so they like dogs and they like cats, we're not gonna include it, so it's false, right? So it's not the center. Now, what if I have someone who likes a dog, but hates cats, right? He likes a dog, but he hates the cats. So is that inside our set of, of exclusive or? Well, if, if you like dogs, right, and you hate cats, so you're not, you're not gonna include anything with the cats, but you still have part of the dogs, right? So gonna be a part of this left side, Right, this left side. Even though you hate cats, you still have the part of the dog of the dogs, right? So that's that's going to be true, right? We're just going to include that also, right? Because if you like dogs and you hate cats, well, the dogs are still part of this this left side, so that's that's why it's true. Now, what if you hate dogs, but you like cats? Well, it's the same thing, right? If you hate dogs, that means you're not going to include anything on the left side, right? The value that you hate the person has, right, is not going to be the dog side because you really don't like it but you like the cats right so that's still part of the set it's still part of the set right because it's still included in this this right part of the cat right because it's you still like cats right even though you hate dogs so 
even though you're not on the, on the left side it's still part of the set of the values who likes cats so that's why this part is going to be true okay now um, let's say you hate both of them so you hate dogs and you hate cats well if you hate dogs and you hate cats right that means they're not part of this whole thing at all any of these two right so that means that yeah it's not going to be including in into that set the set of people who likes both of these so these this is going to be false also so now if you were to convert this into bits where values of true is equal to one so true is going to equal to one and the values of false is equal to zero your let's actually redraw this truth table that we have before so let's actually do that xor and the xor symbol what we normally wrote before in c it's this caret sign normally but uh you could write xor like that also so let's put uh, every true value you're going to have one every false value you're going to have zero so true true and then false is zero uh true false is true right false true is true and then false false so zero zero is false zero okay so that's basically what the xor symbol does this is basically the bitwise equivalence of xor right we have a true true we get zero true true false is true false true is true false false is false so that's what that's where they get the whole bit operation for xor in order to understand xor okay so now now that we have the bit operation of xor let's actually explain um what kind of uh, the properties of xor because xor is a huge thing and there's actually properties mathematical properties you could use about xor that will be beneficial all right guys so here's here are a few properties about xor so in um in abstract algebra we call something that is an ambillion group which is like an operation that you could put on a set if it has these four properties and these are actually the four properties that xor has so xor is an ambillion group okay so an ambillion group has these four properties um, one is it's uh, commutative the second one is it's associative third one has uh, has an identity and the fourth one has a self inverse and we'll actually go over all of these first so let's actually go over the self inverse first because that's actually the most easiest one to go over because that's just showing that it has in self inverse first prop part of self inverse that uh xor does so if you guys know this is the this is the symbol of xor in math right this is the symbol of xor so let's actually just by the way this is a xor by the way so this is a symbol of xor by the way but um basically a self inverse means that if i take a number and i xor it by itself it's going to give me zero and we could actually show an example of why this is the case so let's say i have um a number like five right so five and uh, this is base 10 and let's say I convert into binary okay so what happens if I XOR it by itself the bits of 5 so I'm gonna have 101 and I'm going to XOR it right XOR it like this 101 okay so remember guys um, 1 1 back in our truth table so let's actually go back to our truth table so why uh, so remember 1 1 is equal to 0 1 0 is equal to 1 0 1 is 1 and 0 0 is 0 Okay, and a good way to remember this of the bits is that anything that is equal to each other is going to be false, right? Zero. And then the rest are just true, right? The rest are true. So um, in this case, one, one, one would become zero, right? Because one, one is equal to itself. So we're going to have zero. So one, one becomes zero. Zero, zero becomes zero, right? Because it's equal to itself. So it becomes zero here and it becomes zero. And then one, one becomes is equal to itself. So it becomes zero. Okay, so it's because of this property that um, both of these, anything with the same values of 1, 1 becomes 0, right? Or 0, 0 becomes 0, right? It's guaranteed that if you XOR anything by itself, it's going to be 0, okay? So this is the self inverse. Anything you XOR by itself is going to become 0, okay? And yeah, anything XOR by itself is going to become 0, and yeah. Let's go over the sec the other properties now. Okay, so the next property is that XOR is an, has the identity element. So that means that uh, any value, if I take any number and I XOR it by zero, it's going to give me the same value. So this is the identity property. And um, if the reason why we do this is um, here, let's actually go back to the truth table again. I have to redraw this. So because of this, you could see that basically if you XOR anything with zero, the bits of one and zero, you get one. So it's still going to be the same value if you XOR it 
with zero. And um, we could actually show an example back with the five. And um, if you were to XOR this five with the zero, let's XOR with the zero. So zero is just all bits of zero here, right? Um, as you could see, uh, one zero, right? One zero, it just gets itself of one, right? So this bit is going to be one, okay? Uh, zero zero is the same bit uh, bits, right? Zero zero, same value of bit. So that's why it's going to be always zero. Remember, same values are gonna be zero. But the other ones are ones, right? All right, uh, one zero, see one zero is going to be one, right? Because it's, uh, it's uh, different values, so it's one. So in the end, you still get the same bits of one zero one, right? So anything XOR with zero, you're just gonna get the same value. Okay, that's what this identity means. So um, a good thing, cool thing about XOR is like if you XOR a bunch of numbers, if, if there's a duplicate number and then you XOR with itself, you'll get zero, right? So then if, if you XOR zero with the regular number, you'll just get the same number. So if you use XOR, you could actually get the only value that's not duplicate. So that, that's a cool thing you could use about XOR, right? The only value that's not duplicate. Okay, uh, let's go over the other properties. Okay, so the next property is a commutative property, which basically means that if you XOR anything, a number with another number, right? And you flip the order, it's still gonna be the same thing. And we could actually demonstrate this five and six. Uh, this is one, one, zero. Okay. And let's say we XOR both of these. So we have five and six. So we have one, zero, one, two XOR with uh, one, one, zero. So remember back to our truth table, we don't actually have to draw the two truth table out again. Uh, remember the same numbers are just going to become zero. The rest are just ones, right? So this is going to get me zero, one, one, right? And uh, this number is just, uh, this is three. One plus two is three, yeah, this is, a, this is three. Okay, so um, now let's actually flip the order. So remember what we did first was, this top one was five. We XORed five with uh, six, right? This is, this is five and six. Let's flip the order now. Let's do six XOR with uh, five. So six is just uh, one, one, zero, two. And then this is five, which is one, zero, one. One, zero, one. And then let's XOR these. As you can see, the order that you do, you, you'll still get the same same number. Uh, so um, one, one, th these are the same values, so it's zero. And the rest of one, zero is one, zero, one is one, right? So these two values are just gonna be exactly the same, right? If you flip the order of XOR, you still get the same. No matter what, even if you flip the order, it's still the same value. The last one is the associated property, which is, uh, this is just saying like if you change the order of a parentheses, it's kind of like the same thing as the commutative, uh, commutative. So whoops. So like uh, if I do this, right, I had a parentheses of this. This is going to be the same thing as right. If you change the order of parentheses, it's still the same thing. Uh, and um, we could actually show an example of why this is the case. So um, let's say I had uh, let's let's just make a bunch of bits. Uh, I don't know. So the let a equal to five b equal to six and c equal to seven. Okay, so if I do um, a x or b, right? So this is gonna be, I'll actually draw it out the whole thing. So a x or b is going to be five x or six, right? So I, I let a equal to five, b equal to six, c equal to seven. So five x or six, so let's actually try doing our heads now. One with a zero is one, zero with one is one, right? Because of the different values. One, one is zero because they're the same values and that's what you get. Now let's take this and XOR with the C value, right? This parentheses, right? So we're gonna take this value and then, um, so we're gonna take this value and XOR with C. So let's see, one, one, this one with this one becomes a zero. So we're gonna put a zero. This one becomes a, with this one because a zero because they're the same value, zero. And this zero with a one is a one, right? Zero, one, they're different values, so it's a one. Okay, so this is the number we got for A, X, or B, X, or C. So this is equal to four, right? One, zero, zero, two. And now let's actually do the opposite, uh, the exact opposite, right? So let's do B, C first, and then X, or with A. Let's see if we get the same value. So I'm actually going to take this, size it, and put it here, so I have more room. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna do six and seven, and then we X, or with five. Okay, so now let's do B, C first, and then X, or with A. So uh, BC, what is BC? BC is um, 0, 1 is a 1, 
one one is zero. Zero uh, one one is also zero. Yeah, so we'll get this. Zero zero one, and now we're gonna XOR this with a, right? So now let's do a. All right, one one gets you to a zero. Zero zero is a zero. One zero is a one. Okay. So in the end, you still get the same value of four. One zero zero two. So these values are still the same. So no matter what order you do, you still get the same associative property. Okay, and um, that's pretty much what you need to know about XOR. Pretty much all the properties of XOR. So now let's talk about some cool things you could do with XOR. So one is swapping values. So you could actually swap two values without using an extra variable, and you could do it with XOR. Right, guys, so let's say you want to swap two values A and B. So what you could do is you could, if you don't want to use an extra variable, you could say um, A, we're going to set it to a new, new value of the values of A, X, or B. Then we set B is going to equal to the values A, X, or B. And then we say A is equal to A, X, or B. Okay. So this is like kind of esoteric to understand. But then I'll, I'll explain why this works. So let's go over an example. Let's say we have A is equal to 5 and B is equal to 6. Right. And we want to swap these. So we want what we want is we want A to become 6 and then B to become 5. Right. This is what we want. So how would you do this? Okay, so if I take a and I set it now equal to a x or b, right? So if I take five and six and I x or them, right? So now I have one zero becomes one, zero one becomes one, one one becomes zero. This is my new a value, right? The values that are x or. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take b. My new b value is going to be this a value, x or with b. So what, what is this going to do, right? So this new value of B, is this a new A value? So uh, this, is, this is the new values. So I'll put a prime to represent the new values, okay? So now B, uh, so now B is going to equal to uh, A, X or B, right? That we just changed. So now we have one zero becomes one, one one becomes zero, one zero becomes one, right? So now what did we just do here? We completely switched the bits of B, right? This B is now equal to the same values of the bits as A, right? So we just switched the bits, right? Because if you XOR them and XOR it again, you just switch the bits, right? That's why this worked. We just switched the bits of A and B. So now, um, now, now what we're going to do is we are going to XOR A. Now, this A, right? This a value, we're going to XOR it with b, with the new b, right? So here, one one becomes zero, one zero becomes one, zero one becomes one. Okay, so now our new value of a is equal to one one zero, which is this is equal to six. So our a value just became our b value, and one zero one is five, and this b value just became our a value. So this b value is five. So this is, this is going to equal to five, and these values are switched. So this is going to equal. This is this is this was originally b's value. So these values, these values are the same, and this value of b is now equal to the value of a. So these these values swapped. Okay. So let's let's ex explain why this works, and what what we basically did. Okay. Okay. So I'm going to explain why this works. Okay, so what did we do when we do this operation? We took, originally we, st we took A and X or B, and then we store this new value as the new value of A, right? So this is the new value of A. So the new value of A is equal to AX or B. We'll call this A prime, AX or B, okay? Uh, now what we do, okay? So what did we do with the next operation? So this part, this part of B. B is now going to equal to AX or B, right? AX or B. So this is going to be the new value of a that we just changed. So this b b prime, the new value of b, is going to equal to the new value of a that we just changed. Remember, we stored it into a, right? So new value of a is a prime, and then we XOR this new value of a with b, right? So we take this new value of a a prime, which is going to be a x or b, and then we XOR it with b, right? That's what this is doing. A X or B is X or with B, 
right? So this is our new B, B prime, right? And if you were to follow along with the same operations of the properties that I said earlier, you could evaluate B with B, right? Anything XOR with itself, right? You could change the order that you're, you're, you're evaluating this. B XOR with B is gonna give you zero, right? Because anything XOR with itself is gonna get you zero. So you're gonna get it with A XOR with zero, okay? And then if you XOR A with zero, anything XOR with zero, you get itself, so it's gonna be A. So our new B prime, our new value of B is gonna to equal to the original value of A. Okay, that's what this is doing. All right, now what do we do? We set our new value of A, right? So now new value of A, totally new value of A, so we're gonna set the A value, totally new value of A, so this is completely new, so this is totally new value of A, right? Is going to equal to the what we had earlier, a x or b x or with um b prime right so the, the value that we just changed so we just changed b remember we changed b earlier right here so we're going to take the new value of a a x or b and x or with this b prime so this is going to be a uh, new value of a which is a x or b right this new value of a is a x or b and then we're going to explore this with b prime so this is b prime the new value of b prime which is equal to a Okay, and then if you were to XOR these two, these values and evaluate A with XOR with A first, right? Anything XOR with itself is going to give you zero. So you're gonna get N with, with this and this, well, it's gonna give you zero, XOR with B. And then anything XOR with zero with B is going to get you uh, the original value of B. So you're gonna get B. So that's why our new values of A, our completely new value of A is now equal to B. And then our new value of B is now equal to A. So we just successfully swapped these two values using the associative properties that we just stated before. So yeah, this is the reason why swapping works. I hope you guys enjoy this video. Rate, comment, subscribe. I'll check you guys later.